Alright, uh, so I am just going to run through the character sheet real quick, just to help you guys out a little bit. Um, and let's see if we can get through this in not a crazy long amount of time. Uh, so first off, what we're going to do um, is name our character. This is Dean the Mean. Green Machine. That's right. Uh, Dean the Mean Green Machine is a intelligent jack who wears a sheen of ice. So I just randomly rolled my descriptor type and focus just to see what happens. So um, that's what we are, that is what we're running with. An intelligent jack who wears a sheen of ice. Uh, so I'm going to start with Jack. Uh, the type gives you your your baseline for like stats and things like that. So uh, that is where we will start. So I'm going to get my core book pulled up here. Um, and what I will do is share that over here with you guys. Uh, so let's pull that into focus here. here we go. Oh, that looks crazy. Alright, so a jack. So my stat pools, they all start at 10. And then I get 6 additional points to divide among them however I wish. So they're all at 10. I can divide them, I can divide 6 points between them however I want. So I could do 6 and 1. I'm going to do 2 in each just because. We're going to split it up evenly. So we're going to say that is a 12, 12, and 12. Cool. Alright. Uh, I am a first tier jack, so my effort is 1, and I will explain what effort is at the end of the video. Um, so my effort is 1. That is already established here on the sheet as my tier, I'm tier 1, and I have an effort of 1 at tier 1. Uh, I am a jack of all trades. I have an edge of 1 for one stat choice, um, so either might, speed, or intellect, and you have an edge of 0 for the other two stats. Okay, and I will explain what edge is later as well. Uh, I don't want to get too bogged down on that right now. I'll do that at the end of the video. Uh, I'm going to put this edge point, uh, since I'm an intelligent jack, I'm going to put my edge point in intellect. So we'll drop that right there. Alright. Next, uh, cipher use. You can bear two ciphers at a time. Okay, so ciphers are over here. Um, what ciphers are, they're basically one-time use um, items. They're not necessarily magic items, but they're they're powerful items that can be used only once. Um, and then once it's used, it's you know it burns out, it fizzles, it jams, it blows up, whatever. It becomes useless after it's been used that one time. Um, and we get two of those, so our our cipher limit is two. Uh, weapons. So you can use light and medium weapons without penalty. You have an inability with heavy weapons. Your attacks with heavy weapons are hindered. Uh, so basically what that means uh, is that when I use light and medium weapons um, I don't have any kind of penalty for using them. Um, I am trained in them uh, so it will lower a difficulty for me um, and we'll explain how difficulty works later. Uh, but right now I just need to know that I am trained in light and medium weapons, um, but in heavy weapons I'm hindered. Uh, and I will explain hindered later as well. So we just need to make note of that for now, uh, that I have light weapons and medium weapons. I'm just going to throw that right there. So 
so that I know that I am proficient in those. Okay. Um, and then heavy weapons, I have an inability. Uh, let's do... Actually, let's do this. I'm going to go over here to skills. Light weapons. I am trained. Uh, the weapons are going to vary. The stat is going to change. Um, if it's a melee weapon, it'll be might. If it's a ranged weapon, it'll be speed. So that we can, we can modify later. I'm just going to go with might for right now. Uh, and I'm going to say that I am trained in those weapons. Then I'm going to go down here to medium weapons. Same thing, I'll just do might and I'm trained. Perfect. So now that is set and I don't need you. Okay, uh, and then heavy weapons. I have an inability. So heavy weapons. I'll go with might. And again, the, the stat will change whether it's a ranged weapon or, or a melee weapon. Um, so let's do... All right, and I, am, I have an inability with that, so that's, that's factored in whenever I roll that. Uh, cool. Uh, let's see, weapons... So skills. Choose one skill, other than attacks or defense, in which you aren't already trained. You are trained in this skill. So, the way that skills work, you just kind of make them up as you go. Um, so I'm going to say that I am skilled in acrobatics, because why not? It's always a good thing to be skilled in. So I am an acrobatic person. Uh, it is acrobatics would be speed because it's like dexterity, um, and I am trained in it because the book just told me I was sweet. Okay. Uh, flex skill. At the beginning of each day, choose one task other than attacks or defense on which you will concentrate. Uh, for the rest of that day, you're trained in that task. You can't use this ability with a skill you're already trained in to become specialized. Okay. So I am going to add that to my special abilities, actually. Uh, because it changes from day to day. So flexibility. And was that an action? No. Okay. So I'm just going to put other there. Uh, it does not cost me anything, and it does not use a stat pool. Uh, so I'm just going to copy the text here. So basically what that means is at the beginning of each day I choose something that I think I'm going to be doing that day. So let's say that I am planning to break into a bunch of houses. Um, and I need to be good at picking locks, but I'm not trained in picking locks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my flexibility in the morning. Uh, whenever I get up and I'm going to concentrate on the ability to be able to pick locks and I'm basically just gonna kind of like get myself mentally prepared um, so that the rest of the day I can treat picking locks as a trained skill so for the rest of today I have a skill to pick locks uh, picking locks would be speed again it's like a like a dexterity type thing um, and I'm trained in it so perfect now when I rest for the night um, and get up the next day, I can reconcentrate on this and, and continue to be good at picking locks, uh, or I can pick something else. Every day I can choose a completely different thing to be really good at. Uh, okay. Uh, starting equipment. Uh, not really worried about this, but so you start with clothing, hopefully. Uh, two weapons, light armor. Uh, an explorer's pack, a pack of light tools, two ciphers chosen for you by the GM. Now it also gives you uh, like a suggestion down here, uh, which is what I'm just going to use for right now. Um, 
typically what we'll do is I'll just kind of randomly draw uh, what you'll start with there. Um, let's see, so two ciphers, one oddity chosen by the GM, and eight shins. Shins are your money, that's your currency. Um, so let's go over here to our equipment section. So money, we're going to put eight for shins. Um, and then here you just add in, you know, what the actual equipment that you have, blah, 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 blah. So we have a bunch of add as that is. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, so, and you would add everything, your armor, anything like that, you would just add in here. So, for instance, we have light armor. So we'll throw that in there, because why not? All right, uh, so then I get two ciphers and one oddity. So what's been selected or suggested for us uh, by the book? Uh, so the first cipher is a machine control implant. So I'm going to go up here to my ciphers. Machine control implant. Uh, which is basically just some sort of device that lets me manipulate machines or control machines. Um, again, these are one-time use, so once I've used it, it's useless. I can't use it again. Uh, and then a visage changer. Uh, basically, it's some sort of device that would change my appearance. Now, because we're doing this in a steampunk petting, petting, a steampunk setting instead of a sci-fi setting. Uh, a lot of these we can kind of reskin and make them more steampunkish. Uh, we don't have to necessarily use the sci-fi ones. Alright, so those are my two ciphers and my oddity. Uh, which, we'll just throw the oddity under equipment. Oh, that's not what I want. That's what I want. Uh, oddity, a small square cage that puts whatever single creature is inside it into stasis. Sure, why not? Who doesn't want a stasis inducing cage? Uh, let's just put that under equipment. Cool. So I have my two ciphers and I have my oddity and I have my equipment. Alright, what's next? Tricks of the trade. You have a wide range of abilities that keep people guessing. Some of these tricks of the trade are technically esoteries, or esoteries, uh, using the Numenera. While others, scroll up, are more mundane. Uh, some tricks are constant, ongoing effects. Others are specific actions that usually cost points from one of your stat pools. Uh, choose two of the tricks described below. You can't choose the same trick more than once unless its description says otherwise. Uh, so, uh, let's see. I'm just going to randomly go with the trained in armor and critter companion. Actually, no, there's a really fun one down here. Phase pocket. I'm going to go with critter companion and I'm going to go with phased pocket. So we'll start with Critter Companion. Uh, Critter Companion will be a special ability of mine. Let's see. A level 1 creature accompanies you and follows your instructions. This creature is no larger than a large cat, about 20 pounds, uh, and is normally some sort of domesticated species. Um, you and the GM must work out the details of your creature, and you'll probably make rolls for it in combat or when it takes actions. Uh, the Critter Companion acts on your turn. As a level 1 creature, it has a target number of 3 and 3 health. Uh, it inflicts 1 point of damage. Its movement is based on its creature type. Uh, let's see. If your Critter Companion dies, you can search an urban or wild environment for 1d6 days to find a new companion. Uh, and it is Enabler. Uh, it does not cost us anything. Cool. So basically you just get like a small pet um, that can fight for you and, and, and help you out. So let's copy the text.
And let's throw that in here. Cool. Alright, and then the next one was phased pockets. This one's kind of interesting. Uh, so phased pockets down here. Uh, it has a cost. It costs me two intellect points to use this ability. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that. So costs two intellect points. All right. And what that does, uh, you connect yourself for one hour to a small space that is out of phase and moves with you. Uh, you can access this space as if it were a convenient pocket or bag, but nobody else can perceive or access the space unless they have the ability to interact with trans-dimensional areas. Um, the space can hold up to one cubic foot. The space is a part of you, so you can't use it to carry more ciphers than your limit. Um, a detonation cipher activated inside the space harms you, and so on. Uh, when the connection ends, anything in the space falls out. Uh, for each two additional intellect points you spend, the pocket lasts an additional hour. Um, so it starts off, if it lasts for an hour, you can spend additional points to make it last even longer. Um, basically it just kind of creates a little pocket dimension uh, that you can kind of carry things around in and nobody knows it's there. Um, good for, like if you're trying to smuggle things, anything like that. Um, you just kind of drop stuff into that pocket dimension and walk out, and nobody's the wiser. Uh, so it costs me two intellect points. It is enabler, so I can do it whenever I want to. It does not require an action. So let's go over here. We're going to change that to enabler. And we'll copy the text. Cool. And that is my, those are my two tricks that I know. Okay, and I think the two tricks, yes, that is the end of the first tier. So I'm done with Jack. My type is done. So let's go over here. Let's go to Descriptor. And I took Intelligent. So let's take a look at what Intelligent gives me. Uh, so starting out, I'm quite smart, my memory is sharp, and I easily grasp concepts that others might struggle with. Of course I do. Uh, this aptitude doesn't necessarily mean that you've had years of formal education, uh, but you have learned a great deal in your life, primarily because you pick things up quickly and retain so much. Uh, you gain the following benefits. So I'm smart, my intellect pool goes up by two. So I'm going to go over here to my intellect, and we're going to make that a 14. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's see. Skill. You're trained in an area of knowledge of your choice. Okay. So an area of knowledge of my choice, I think... So I wear a sheen of ice, uh, so I'm going to say that my knowledge is in manipulating elements. Um, so I'm going to say knowledge, let's say elemental manipulation. And basically what that means is as we're playing the game, uh, if we come across something where, uh, like, there's a... There's a wall of fire, or there's a wall of ice, or something like that. Um, I can roll this knowledge to figure out how to get past it because I've trained myself in uh, manipulating elements. Alright, uh, what else do I get? Let's see, uh, over here. Uh, let's see, so, so you're trained in all actions that involve remembering or memorizing things you experience directly. For example, instead of being good at recalling details of geography that you read about in a book, uh, you can remember a path through a set of tunnels that you've explored before. 
Uh, so basically, I've got photographic memory when it comes to things that I have directly experienced. Um, so if I need to remember how to get through a certain set of mazes or a forest or a set of uh, alleyways, things like that, um, I can perfectly recall that information. If I need to remember, you know, this is anything that I've experienced directly. So if I need to remember the face of the guy that I met two months ago, I can remember that um, because that is something I directly uh directly experienced. So let's put that under our skills. I'm just going to put uh, skill memorizing things you experience directly. Cool. And that will be intellect and we are trained. Okay, that takes care of that. So what's next? Uh, the initial link to the starting adventure, I don't care about that right now. That is something that we can do later. Alright, no, that's something we will do later. The initial link to the starting adventure and the connections we will do uh, during the like session zero type thing. Alright, so my focus uh, was that I wear a sheen of ice. Where is the sheen of ice? There you are. So let's go down here. Uh, so through my studies, I've learned to focus my natural talents to command the powers of ice and cold. Uh, people might refer to you as an ice mage. Sometimes ice mages are thought to come into conflict with those known as fire mages, but this is a fallacy believed by ordinary folks more than anything based in truth. Uh, you likely wear white or blue garments that are heavier than they need to be, unless you live in a cold region or wintry clime, uh, in which case you probably wear less clothing than other people do because the cold doesn't bother you. Uh, most ice mages are nanos, but a glaive armored in ice, perhaps wielding an ice sword, would be quite impressive. However, I'm a jack, so... whatever. I don't care. Uh, let's see, so these are our connections. Again, we will do the connections during the session zero. Uh, additional equipment. I have a bladed weapon made of strong glass that looks like ice. Cool. And there's a little excerpt on strong glass over here. Uh, what page are we on? We are on page 88, so let's remember that. So strong glass, what does strong glass do? Uh, material looks, fills, and is worked like glass. It has the strength of steel. All right. Cool. Thought that might give us some more information, but it did not. All right, so let's add that to our sheet. So we have a weapon. We have a bladed weapon uh, made of strong glass but looks like ice. So it is strong glass but looks like ice. Um, let's call this bladed weapon... We're going to call it ice pick. That is not how you spell pick. There we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, it doesn't really tell if it's a light, medium, or heavy weapon. I'm going to say it's a medium weapon. Uh, so my bladed weapon is medium. We'll just throw that in the description here. Medium. Which means it has a damage of four. So the way that damage works, um, damage is a flat number. Light weapons are two, medium weapons are four, and then heavy weapons are eight. Um, I may be wrong about that. Heavy weapons may be six. I don't remember offhand. Um, but I'm going to say that they're eight because that just sounds cooler. All right. Um, so, but for right now, so medium weapons deal 4 damage, so my 
my ice pick of strong glass uh, is four damage. Beautiful. Okay, what is next? Uh, so additional equipment, so ice abilities. If you possess abilities that would normally use force or other energy, they instead use cold and ice. Uh, for example, a force blast is a ray of frost. This alteration changes nothing other than the type of damage. As another example, barrier creates a wall of ice. This alteration changes nothing except the wall's appearance and the fact that it takes two additional points of damage from fire. Uh, so basically, you just kind of reskin everything uh, to be cold and ice related, um, which is kind of neat. Alright, so minor effect suggestions, major effect suggestions. Those are things that we will get into later, uh, whenever we do the, the Session Zero stuff. Uh, basically, these are things that you can suggest into the narrative. Um, but we will get into how that works later. Uh, so tier one, you have a thing called ice armor. I guess I have a thing called ice armor. It's my character. Uh, so ice armor costs one intellect point. Uh, when you wish it, so this is an at will type thing, uh, your body is covered in a sheen of ice for 10 minutes that gives you plus one to armor. Uh, while the sheen is active, you feel no discomfort from normal cold temperatures and have, uh, let's see, an additional plus two to armor versus cold damage specifically. Cool. So the way that armor works in this game, uh, armor is damage reduction. So armor does not impact how difficult it is to hit you. Um, it only negates damage. So... Uh, let's add this in here. So I have a special ability called Ice Armor that I can do whenever I want to. Oh god, didn't want to open that. Alright, so it costs one intellect point. So I'm going to say one and intellect. Copy the text here. That is enabler. So again, it doesn't use an action. I can do that whenever I want to. Uh, I don't have to use my action to do it. So if I want to, let's say combat starts, it comes to my turn. And <clears throat> I want to activate this and then attack, I can still do that. Uh, because this is enabler, it does not require an action. So let's copy in the description here. Okay. And it would cost me one intelligent point to do that. And we'll go over that at the end of the, the video as well. All right. Uh, so that is my tier one ability. That is it for tier one. So that covers my type, my descriptor, and my focus. So I'm an intelligent jack who wears a sheen of ice. I have a might of 12, speed of 12, and an intellect of 14, um, with my edge point being in intellect. All right, so let's go over edge and effort. Um, so what edge does is it reduces the amount of points I need to spend uh, from that particular stat pool. So. For instance, uh, we have this ice armor ability, right? And it costs one intellect point. So normally, if I normally what I would do is whenever I cast that uh, ice armor on myself, I would subtract one point from my intellect pool. But because I have an edge of one, it reduces that by one. So instead of spending one point, I spend zero points. So I can do that as much as I want to, and it never depletes my intellect. Which is nice. Uh, but the phased pockets ability, that one costs two intellect points. So whenever I go to cast that, normally I would subtract two points from my intellect pool. Because of my edge of one, I only subtract one point. 
um, so I can do it twice as often. Uh, the way that effort works, so before I explain effort, um, the way that the the entire system works, the way that it's completely uh, what it's based around, um, is you have ten levels of difficulty, one through ten, and the target number for each difficulty uh, is three times the the difficulty level. So if it's a level one, the difficulty is three. If it's level two, the the target number is six. If it's level three the target number is 9 uh, and so on. So let's say that you wanted to uh, let's say you wanted to pick a lock right so I would say okay uh, this particular lock uh, is a difficult lock it's, it's very advanced uh, technology it, it's it's a lot more difficult than what most locks would be. So you're going to click on the die. Uh, you're not getting a bonus or a penalty. The difficulty was difficult. I said it was a difficult roll, so it's going to be level 4 difficulty, which means the target number is 12. Now, you can spend one point of effort, which will lower that difficulty. Oops. Um, the way that you spend effort is you subtract three points from whatever pool um, is associated with that roll. So for instance, we're doing pick locks, that's going to be a speed roll. So I would subtract three points from my speed pool, and that would let me lower the difficulty by one. So I'm going to go down to my pick locks, I don't have a bonus, the difficulty was four and I used one point of effort and I don't have an asset. An asset is like a tool or an item or something that you have that would make picking this lock easier. Uh, but I don't have anything like that so I'm going to submit and I failed. So the way that this works, so you understand the numbers, so the initial difficulty was four, right? I told you that the target difficulty was four. So you needed to roll a 12 or higher. Um, you're trained in picking locks, right? We're trained over here. So that subtracted one from the difficulty. So instead of a four, it became a three, which means the target number was nine. But we spent that one point of effort, which dropped it again. So that dropped it down from a three to a two, which made the target number six. Unfortunately, we rolled a three. So we did not meet the six that was required, which means we failed to pick the lock. Uh, up here, so doing the same thing, so up here we succeeded. Um, so the difficulty was 4, target number was 12, I was trained in picking locks, so I subtract 1, and then I spent 1 point of effort, so I subtracted 1 again, which made the final result, the final difficulty was 2, so the target number was 6, and I had rolled a 9. Uh, so I successfully picked that lock. So basically what that means is that I just needed to roll a 6 or higher on a d20 to succeed. That's how the that's how this entire system works. Anything that you want to do, um, the difficulty will be set uh, at the beginning, and then you will roll to try and beat that difficulty with a d20. Um, so, for instance, let's say that I was trying to uh, do acrobatics. I was trying to jump uh, from one ledge to another, do some like parkour type stuff. So I'm gonna go over here. And we're going to say, you know what, the ledges aren't that far apart. Uh, I'm not going to get a bonus, but it's just going to be a standard task. It's not going to be anything crazy, it's just standard. Uh, so I will submit. I did not spend any effort because standard just means I need to hit a 6 or higher. I'm not going to waste effort on it. I'm not going to spend any points for my pool. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can roll a 6 or higher. Uh, so I'm going to submit, and I did. I rolled a 14. So I blew this task way out of the water. Uh, here's the thing. I was trained in acrobatics. So that 2 dropped was decreased by 1 because I'm trained. So I actually, the final difficulty was a 1. I only had to roll a 3 or higher. And then I rolled a 14. So of course, I'm awesome. 
Uh, cool. And that is how rolling works in Numenera. Uh, you will roll everything. I do not roll a thing. So everything that's done is you rolling, not me. Uh, I just set the difficulty, and then you hit the button. Cool. Uh, let's see. Does that explain everything? That went over everything, I think. We went through building the character. We went through what effort does. We went through how edge works. Uh, the other little nuances we'll go over uh, as we as we go through the game, uh, and we'll we'll kind of dig into a lot of stuff during the session zero. Uh, but hopefully this helped out a lot uh, as far as just getting started and having a place to start from. Um, love you guys, and hope you have a great night. Cool.